Making a welcome and much anticipated return to animated shorts this year is Canadian animator Cordell Barker, perhaps most known for his work with the NFB, including the Oscar nominated films The Cat Came Back and Strange Invaders, as well as the Genie Award winning Runaway. His first film since then is If I Was God. Filmed stereoscopically, it's the first of his to incorporate stop motion amongst other animation styles. We met with Cordell during production of the film to learn more and discuss his enduring relationship with the NFB. I had gone to the film, I'd wanted to do a film board film. I was working in an animation studio in Winnipeg, and um, I'd heard through somebody that the film board would be very receptive to any of the animators working there uh, of approaching the film board to do a film. I, what I didn't realize at the time was the film board had just established an office, a western office there, uh, just only a couple of years prior. I thought they'd been there forever, and because uh, I was just a young guy, like 17. And so eventually I put together a film about an old man and his cat and this adversarial situation in this house. So I went to the film board in Winnipeg and presented it to them, this storyboard, and they didn't really want to do it. but. Uh, they did say, well, you've presented this story about an old man and his cat, and we really want to do The Cat Came Back. So I, I took that on, and, uh, and they paired me up with the, the singer. But eventually I thought, well, I really need to do this my own way, because he, he's got his way of doing it, because he'd been singing it for so long. And I wanted to do a kind of a different style, so I asked if I could do it on my own, and they agreed. And which is remarkable, really, because I was just this young guy. And then that it became bigger than I ever thought it would ever be. That film that really launched my well, it certainly launched my commercial career because it was that's why my second film took 10 years to finish because I had so much commercial work just seven days a week, working nights as well, and just like it would that went on for months and months. and year after year and eventually I had to stop doing commercial work if I was ever going to do more than just one film. So eventually I, I got to finish Strange Invaders. <laughs> the thing is, if I was a god, I wouldn't just use my power to punish. I'd use it to get what I wanted. It is ostensibly autobiographical. You know, those formative years when you, you sort of have a whiff of adulthood. You know, you're almost kind of there, you're on the doorstep of becoming uh, more adult-like and uh, sort of sensing that power that's, that's going to come. But I don't really, I'm, I'm very bad with memory, like of school years. It's just a blur, so I'm, I've actually kind of manufactured a memory and uh, which is more appealing to me anyway because there's lots of films out there that are a memory of a certain person or you know very concrete thing but I I wasn't interested in doing that I wanted to kind of sort of make an amalgam of of thoughts at the time in the midst of all of that there's this frog dissection scene in it which triggers the whole sort of having the power you know like the old electrostimulation yeah. thing of the frog and speculating on having that kind of life and death, uh, or seeming life and death abilities. And in the classroom though, there's, the, there's a little microcosm of society. So I'm being bullied by a girl that's even shorter than me and uh, attracted to a girl that's much taller than me. And so this whole thing plays out and there's little imagination sequences. And, and the th one of the things that drove me to do this, I wanted to do stereoscope and I love the idea of kids in a classroom on a grid, you know, like that kind of box-like, grid-like formation of kids in a classroom really appealed to me in stereoscope. You know, you have, everything's defined. So, and stop motion is perfect for that, for stereoscope. And because it has this kind of weird sort of surreality to it. But I also wanted to do other forms of, of animation as well. So as I, as a grade seven student, as I'm speculating about having the powers of God, I'm going off on little little imagination sequences, which allows me to uh, dabble in 
other animation techniques. And the, and the animation techniques are triggered by the very things that are in the classroom. So I just thought, yeah, it was a good vehicle for me to kind of experiment and, and just kind of, you know, go nuts. I'm working with a small animation crew of Dale Hayward and Sylvie Trouvé, a couple that uh, do animation together. And uh, so they did my characters in the classroom based on my designs and I did very detailed animatics. And then from there, the imagination sequences, I wanted to do those because their imagination of a grade seven student. So I felt that once the professional base level was set in the classroom, I could be as naive as I wanted in the imagination sequences. So as a result, if it looks bad, I can just say, well, it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> so it's perfect. <laughs> There's like 2D that's kind of mixed into a stop motion three dimensional world on a flipper machine that I built. And, uh, and then there's like chalkboard lines come up, so there's, there's my 2D component. And then claymation, and then paper mache, I'm going to do like paper characters that they're sort of like pieces of, like uh, they're made out of paper, and I've made all these like paper mache worlds, but, and again, I didn't have to make really perfect like, it's like a mobile that comes to life, you know, like uh, hanging up in the ceiling. But the mobile only has to look as good as a grade 7 student could possibly make it. So, again, the bar has been set low for me. <laughs> I would do drawings up, like profile drawings, face-on drawings, and um, just all, all the detail stuff, like all the props, uh, giving sort of schematics of, of how they, they uh, go together. Because I, I had a very particular look. I, I didn't want it overly set-dressed because I see a lot of stop motion that has got tons of set dressing in it. And I didn't want that. I, I wanted things to be a little bit more blank, you know, a little bit more sparse. And like big, especially not from this wall, but in the reverse angle, when you look at the kids, it's not like a, a wall behind them that has tons of things taped to the wall like you would see in lots of stop motion films. I just have like a big green blank wall because I liked the kids framed in in just blankness, you know, because that's my memory of, of being back in school is like big walls, big blank walls and, and, and green. It, it has an isolating look to it, I think. Part of me wants to kind of stay away from the f overly frenetic stuff of like Cat Came Back and okay. things like that, where I'm just trying to experiment with a different tone and a different kind of pacing. But the trouble is when I do it and then I look at it, I'm constantly going, oh, it's like that's really hanging on the screen for a long time. I should really tighten that up and cut out some frames. And, and, and then when it starts getting faster and faster, it, starts, it feels right to me. I guess I'm an impatient viewer. And once I see something and I get it, then it's like, okay, like move on. And that's, I guess, how I approach my own stuff.